Hello everyone, Ollie here and welcome to my review of The Underwater Menace, the fifth story of the fourth season of Classic Doctor Who starring Patrick Troughton as the second Doctor. The Underwater Menace is also the 32nd story overall, four episodes long and is written by Jeffrey Orme. The Underwater Menace is partially missing with only episodes 2 and 3 surviving but the telesnaps of the episodes exist. In addition, episode 2 is actually the earliest surviving Patrick Troughton story to be recorded. The plot of the Underwater Menace is as follows. The TARDIS arrives on an extinct volcanic island. Before long, the travellers are captured and taken into the depths of the Earth, where they find a hidden civilization, the lost city of Atlantis. The Atlanteans worship a goddess named Amado and use fish people. Men and women operated upon so they can breathe under, under the sea to farm the plankton-based food they reach on which they survive. A deranged scientist, Professor Zaroff, has convinced them that he can raise the city from the sea, but actually he plans to drain in the oceans into the Earth's molten core so that the resultant superheated steam can will cause the planet to explode. So as I mentioned in my review of the Highlanders, I'm not really too fond of the story. In fact, the Underwater Menace is actually my least favourite Charlton story for various reasons. I felt as if the production issues actually affected the story itself. Patrick Charlton didn't like the script and he felt as if he would get the blame if Doctor Who were to be cancelled because of this story. And this story was actually filmed a week before it went on air on television. And of course with Jamie joining the TARDIS at the last minute, from that point it looked as if this story wasn't meant to be. Although there were some parts that were alright in this story, but obviously not good enough to make the story possible in my, in my eyes. The set designs are very good, it captured that Atlantean feel to it and it was very photogenic and very appealing to the eyes but and also the fish people's costume was, was quite good i liked it some people don't like it but i thought it was pretty cool and i can tell that a lot of effort really went into making the outfits but i do wish more attention was paid to the story itself more than the actual costume story-wise the only thing i like the only things i liked of the story were the cliffhangers as for episodes one and episode three episode one was and was actually quite frightening with polly being potentially being turned into a fish person at the hands of <coughs> Zorov scientist and with episode 3 with Zorov shooting Thus <laughs> and declaring nothing in the world can stop me now and it was very iconic for a reason I think they were actually one of the reasons why I actually enjoyed one of the very little reasons that I actually enjoyed the, high, the underwater menace Zorov himself was a good villain it was as if the actor Joseph first was actually taking the story very seriously, despite the production issues and the lousy direction by Julia Smith and the lousy script. Charlton, I think he actually tried his best. He was okay, even though he and his co-stars actually despised the story, but he still has his goofy side here. I mean, I like the part when he blew dust on Zara's face using his recorder and that goofy smile he had. Yeah, actually, that was actually in episode 3, so it, which survives, and that actually made me chuckle. The side characters, they weren't really that interesting. But I liked Romo, the man who actually helped the Doctor and the companions for some of the story. He, he gets stabbed with a spear by Zaroff, but he actually survives. But I can't remember if he survives or if he actually sees the end of the story. But but the other two guys I liked were Sean and Romo, who actually were working on Zaroff's project. They were all right, and I liked how they were able to convince the, convince the fish people to stop the plankton supply to Atlantis. Now, on to the things I don't really like about this story. I didn't really like the writing, as I mentioned earlier. It was obviously washed because there was a story called The Imps, which was, I think it was written, but they had to drop it, and I think the story was quickly written to a comedy Jamie in some form, who pretty much joined at the last minute in the Highlanders because Ennis Lloyd actually invited Fraser Hines to be a part of the TARDIS team. Even though the final scene where he and Kirsty were saying goodbye to the Doctor, Ben and Polly were already filmed, so after accepting, they had to pretty much shoot another scene where the Doctor, Jimmy, Ben and Polly just entered the TARDIS. And Jimmy, even though he, even though he was actually accommodated in this story, he doesn't actually do much, and it ended up being very short. He was just there with Ben. I think he was involved in some of the action scenes, and in episode four, which is actually missing, there's not a telesnap of it, but. I think in the script it does mention that Jamie actually slaps Polly because she was being hysterical. Other parts of the production weren't very good also. To quote Innes Lloyd, he felt to quote Innes Lloyd, it felt like an 50s American B movie. 
and the lame script, the plot, the very campy plot, and the campiness of the episode itself actually reflected that. <clears throat> the direction by Julia, Lewis, Julia Smith wasn't very good also. She did a decent job directing the smugglers, but this story, it wasn't really well done, and you can tell by some of the decisions made in this story by the directors, of course, and the writing, which wasn't very good at some of the times. <clears throat> In addition, the fish people got a whole three, three minutes in episode three just dilly dallying in the in the water with that music playing. I like the music, but the scene itself was just unnecessary, and I felt like it was it was just put there to at least flesh out the story the story a bit. Aside from the behind this behind the scenes stuff, I really found the underwater menace quite boresome, and it really dragged up most of the times. The plot was rather silly as well. I mean, obviously. The plot was there, it felt like a James Bond movie <laughs> in a way, but it did kind of drag. I mean, Resolve wanted to destroy the Earth by using Atlantis. I mean, yeah, I mean, it did feel, <clears throat> it did quite feel very James Bond, but in a, I wouldn't say in a good, well, I don't know. I mean, James Bond is usually has villains with ambitious, crazy plans like this, but this story didn't really felt like Doctor Who at all. I mean, yeah, James Bond does it well, but I think this story was just a bit. It did feel a bit daft. I mean, obviously, Joseph first, who was actually, I think he was trying to take it seriously, even though the writing itself wasn't very good. But, but the story itself, I think it was tried trying too hard to be serious, but it was just downright laughable. Like Zara faking a heart attack in episode three to escape to escape. I mean, <laughs> it was so bad. It was so laughable. Honestly, I mean, come on. <laughs> We could do a lot better than that. As I mentioned before, this is Jamie's first story as a full-fledged member of the TARDIS team. And he doesn't really do anything at all. I mean, I do wish the story actually focused more on Jamie and his, having him adapt to his new surroundings, considering the fact that he's from the 1700s, from the Battle of the Culloden era. And now he's pretty much in the future. I mean, we all know how Jamie... He doesn't... He, we all know Jamie. He's not really used to all this time travel stuff and even in later stories he's not really used to here and he's obviously asking questions and stuff like the doctor how does this work doctor this doctor that how does this work what is this what is that i mean you don't really see much of that in jamie here i mean he's just there he doesn't really do much but i do actually but the, but him actually questioning his surroundings and they, they did happen but i did wish in episode one with the first few minutes after the tardis departed from scotland with the dog, the Jamie in the TARDIS just asking, What's this? What's that? Why are you going and all that? And Jim, Jimmy, Ben, and Polly explaining to him what the TARDIS is and and all that. But but the, the writer actually went head first into the story without developing Jamie or at least giving some interesting things about him, considering the fact that he pretty much joined the TARDIS team in the last story. Uh, for even though, even in the Highlanders where Jamie joined, he doesn't even do a whole lot compared to the other characters. So, but it isn't really obvious that Jamie would actually join the TARDIS. Now onto the other, other ad established companions. Ben, he actually does stand out compared to Polly and Jamie, but he doesn't do much. But he does have some moments with the Doctor that actually helps him out a bit. But Polly, I didn't like how she was reduced to a damsel in this dressful vital part of the story, and she was just unnecessarily screaming at times, and especially when Zara stabbed Rama with the spear, and she was like. And then obviously, Zorov kidnapped her again, and even Anna Carol, she didn't really like that idea for Polly. So, the underwater menace was pretty much doomed from the start, and it really should throughout the story. And to be honest, I have to give the underwater menace a 3 out of 10, thus making the story a bad egg. <laughs> my next review is the moon based Doctor's second encounter with the Cybermen, and of course, my other review will be the Doctor No, the first ever James Bond movie which will be coming very soon, so stay tuned for both of them. Thanks for watching this, well, thanks for listening to this review. Let me know what you thought of this, this, this story and this review, and stay tuned.